So we are going to find the product from i equals 1 to infinity of 5 to the 1 half to the i plus 3 to the 1 half to the i divided by 2. And this is going to be a really awesome one to evaluate, so make sure you stick around to see the whole solution. The first thing we want to do when we're dealing with this kind of product is it's kind of hard to deal with infinity from the get-go. So to have this infinity on the top is going to bother us a little bit. What we want to do is consider finite products and then extend those to the case where we're at infinity. So instead of taking the product from 1 to infinity right away, I'm going to say this product goes from i equals 1 to n, and then we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity. Now to start off, notice this divided by 2 on the bottom is not really a big deal. It's not going to be super difficult to handle. So we're going to ignore the 2 for now and just take a look at the top. Then we'll bring back that 2 later. This 5 to the 1 half to the i plus 3 to the 1 half to the i is kind of crazy. So what we want to do is just take a look at some of the first few cases of this product and see if we can find a pattern. That's often a very good way to get started. So to begin, let's consider the case where n equals 1. We're just going to have one product here, and it will be 5 to the power of, remember, n is just 1. We have 1 half to the 1 plus 3 to the 1 half to the 1. And that's just going to give us 5 to the 1 half plus 3 to the 1 half. Nice and simple. The next one, let's see what happens when n equals 2. So we're going to have the same thing first. And now this time we're multiplying by 5 to the 1 half to the second power plus 3 to the 1 half to the second power. And now when we expand this out, let's just foil this out, expand everything through and see what we get. First of all, if we take these two 5s, we're going to have 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 1 fourth. We know if we have these two together with the same base of 5, we can add the exponents on the top. So I'm going to write it as 5 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth. Next, if we take 5 to the 1 half and then 3 to the 1 fourth, and then after that we can take 5 to the 1 fourth and 3 to the 1 half. And finally, our last term is going to be 3 to the 1 fourth plus 1 half for the remaining two parts just like this. So this is our second expansion. And we're going to do one more just to see if we can figure out a pattern that's going on here. So for n equals 3, I'll write out this whole product. And I'll go down a line to write out our answer here. Let's expand this out the same way that we did the ones on the top here. Remember that for each set of these parentheses, we're going to pick one of the two terms for each of the parts that we're expanding out. So the first one, if we pick all of the fives, will give us 5 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth, and then our last one, 1 half cubed, is plus 1 eighth. And then after that, if we pick the 5s on these two and then the 3 to the 1 eighth, then we'll have 5 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth times 3 to the 1 eighth. And then after that, if we pick this 3 to the 1 fourth, then we'll get 5 to the 1 half plus 1 eighth, 3 to the 1 fourth, and then we're just going to keep expanding this out. I'll put a dot, dot, dot. And then the last two terms will be if we take all of the threes except for this 5 to the 1 eighth. Notice we'll have 3 to the 1 half here plus 1 fourth. And then times our 5 to the 1 eighth for this last set of parentheses. And then the very last term we'll have is if we pick all of the threes. So we'll have 3 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth and then plus 1 eighth. Now, there's a reason that I've written all of these things out the way that I've done. And let's take a look at the n equals 2 case to start out. Notice at the beginning, we have 5 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth. After that, we take away a 5 to the 1 fourth and we multiply 3 to the 1 fourth. So we can think about going from the first term to the second term. We multiplied by 3 fifths to the 1 fourth because we multiplied by 3 to the 1 fourth and we divided by that 5 to the 1 fourth, so that's not there anymore. When we go to the next term, we can actually see that the same pattern continues. From the second term to the third term is also 3 fifths to the 1 fourth, because we see the 3 has a power going from 1 fourth to 1 half, which is adding a quarter, and then the 5 is going down from a half 
to a fourth. And that's going to continue for the last term as well. Does this pattern hold for the other ones? Well, if we look at the n equals 1 case, instead of 3 fifths to the 1 fourth, in this case, we're going to multiply by 3 fifths to the 1 half. And notice on the top, there's a pattern of a half and then a fourth. Well, for this last one, we should expect to have 1 eighth in the power. And in fact, that's exactly what we see. When we go from the first term to the second term, it's going to be 3 fifths to the 1 eighth. And that's why this 1 eighth disappears from the 5, and we put it next to the 3. And that continues all the way across here until the very end. And that means that we can write all of these finite products in terms of a geometric sum. So let's do that, starting out with this 5 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. We can write that as 5 to the power of, well, a half plus a fourth plus an eighth. That's going to be the sum from k equals 1 to 3. So for some arbitrary value of n, if it's not 3, we'll just put n, and then we'll have 1 half to the power of k. After that, every time we go along here, we're going to be multiplying by 3 fifths to the power of 1 eighth, and we're going to add them all up. So we take this 5 to the whatever power to the outside, and then we'll write here the sum of all of these terms. Well, that's going to go from k equals 0 up to, well, let's think about how many terms there are. For n equals 2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. And that corresponds to the fact that we can pick two terms from this first set of parentheses and two from the second set of parentheses. So 2 times 2 is 4. When we had 3, there was 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So in general, we're going to have 2 to the n terms in this sum. Since we're starting at 0, we want to have 1 less as our upper bound. And now let's think about what happens as we go along this sum. Remember, each time, we're going to multiply by 3 fifths to the power of, what is this? Well, 1 eighth is the same as 1 half cubed. So in general, if it's not n equals 3, we just have some n, it'll be 1 half to the n. That's going to get raised to the kth power. Because remember, we multiply once, and then we multiply again, and then again, and again, every time that power is going to keep going up. So this is the general form of our partial product. Now what we want to do is evaluate each of these sums separately, and then we can come back and figure out what exactly is going on here. So I've cleared the board a little bit, and now we're going to take a look at each of these two sums on the inside. Before we start, I'm going to just write down the general formula for when we have a finite geometric series. So if we're going from k equals either 0 or 1 up to n of r to the power of k for some number r, the result of this is going to be the first term in the series minus the next term. And when I say next, I mean the first term that isn't in the series. Then we divide by 1 minus r. So let's take a look at how this applies to each of our series here. When we have the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 half to the k, notice r is 1 half here. What is the first term of this series? Well, that's going to be 1 half to the power of 1, which is just 1 half. Then we want the next term. So what is the first term that isn't in this series? This is going from 1 half to the first up to 1 half to the n. After n is going to be n plus 1. So our next term will be 1 half to the n plus 1. Then we divide by 1 minus r, just like that. We can simplify this a little bit. Notice here, 1 minus 1 half on the bottom is equal to 1 half. So we're dividing by 1 half here. That means we can cancel this 1 half on the top into a 1. And then we'll subtract 1 half. Well, we have 1 half to the n plus 1, but then we divide by a half. So we subtract 1 from the power here and we have n in the power. So that is our first sum. Now we want to take a look at the one that's a little bit more complicated, but actually not that bad. So we'll be able to get through this. We want the sum from k equals 0 to 2 to the n minus 1 of 3 fifths to the power of 1 half to the power of n raised to the power of k. Now this looks pretty complicated, but notice this inside here. We set n as some arbitrary integer. So this whole thing, 3 fifths to the 1 half to the n, that is just our common ratio r. It's not going to change at all. 
So we can just plug in this formula for what we have right here. The first term when k equals 0 is going to be to the 0th power, which will just give us a 1. And then we have the next term after this. Notice the last term in our sequence is 2 to the n minus 1. So the next one will have k equal 2 to the n. That means we'll have 3 fifths to the power of 1 half to the n. And then we raise that to the power of k is equal to 2 to the n for our next term. Then we divide by that common ratio, 3 fifths to the 1 half to the n. And now there's something really cool that happens in this series. Notice we have in the power of this 3 fifths, 1 half to the n, and then times 2 to the n. Well, those are going to exactly cancel out. And when those cancel out, 2 to the n over 2 to the n just gives us 1. And therefore, on the top, we're just going to have 1 minus 3 fifths, which is, of course, 2 fifths. And then we divide by the same thing that we had on the denominator here. Now we have our two partial sums ready. We can actually go back and plug them in to what we have right here. So this is going to be equal to, notice we have 5 to the power of that first sum. So we have 5 to the 1 minus 1 half to the n. And then the second sum is the result that we had here. So I'll bring the 2 fifths out to the front. We have that on the outside. And then 1 over 1 minus 3 fifths to the power of 1 half to the power of n. So let's see what kind of cancellation we can do here. Notice we have a 5 to the first power and then divided by 5. So those two are going to cancel. This 1 will cancel with our divided by 5. And now, we have a 5 to the negative 1 half to the n. Because it's a negative exponent, we can bring it to the bottom and make it positive. So that's going to be our next step. When we do this, I'll bring the 2 all the way to the front. So we'll have a 2 out here. And then we have 1 over this 5 to the power of 1 half to the n. So we just took this negative exponent and brought it down. And then we're going to multiply this by 1 minus 3 fifths to the power of 1 half to the power of n. So this is all good. Notice on the bottom what's happening here. 5 to the 1 half to the n, and then divided by, right here, 5 to the 1 half to the n. So this thing on the top is going to cancel with this 5 on the bottom for the term on the right inside of those parentheses. Let's see exactly what happens here. If we bring the 2 up to the top like this, on the bottom we're going to have this times 1 just gives us the same thing, 5 to the 1 half to the n. And then minus, notice this 5 cancels with the bottom 5, like we said before. So we're just going to have 3 to the 1 half to the n. This is the formula for our finite product. So all we have to do now is take this and plug it into our limit that we're trying to calculate up here. So I've cleared the board one more time, and it's time to get cracking finally at this limit as n approaches infinity. Now remember, when we start this limit that we said at the beginning, we were going to ignore the 2 and then get back to it later. So now that we're doing the limit, we have to think about this 2 a little bit. When we have a finite product from i equals 1 to n of just 1 half, if we're just looking at this 2, well, that's going to be 1 half times 1 half times 1 half n times. Or in other words, it'll be 1 half to the n. So we can put that in the numerator here. And then we want the limit as n approaches infinity of this 2 gives us the 1 half to the n. And then we have the rest of the stuff here. I'm going to bring this 2 on the top all the way to the outside. So I have 2 over here. And then divided by 5 to the 1 half to the n minus 3 to the 1 half to the n. Now from here, the really awesome thing is we have 1 half to the n in every single part of this limit. Everything in the limit is in terms of 1 half to the n. So this limit is screaming for us to do a substitution. Let's see exactly what that looks like. If we let u equal 1 half to the n, this isn't an integral, so we don't have to find du. But instead, we have to find what u approaches as n approaches infinity. So let's think about that. As n approaches infinity, we're going to get 1 half to the power of infinity. So 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, those are going to keep decreasing down towards 0. So u is going to approach 0 
from the positive direction, since 1 half to the n is always positive for a real number. That means our whole limit is equal to 2 times the limit as u approaches 0 from the right of 1 half to the n on the top here, that is our u, divided by 5 to the u minus 3 to the u. And if we look at what we have here, let's think about what would happen if we plugged in u equals 0. We would have a 0 on the top here, and then 5 to the 0 is 1, minus 3 to the 0 is 1. So we have 1 minus 1 equals 0. That means this whole thing is a 0 over 0 situation, which means we can apply L'Hopital's rule to find this limit. We can take the derivative of the top and bottom. So by L'Hopital's rule on this 0 over 0, we have the derivative of u with respect to u is 1, and then we have on the bottom. The derivative of 5 to the u is 5 to the u times natural log 5. And then same thing, 3 to the u natural log 3 for that second part. And can we plug in u equals 0 right now? Yes, in fact, we can. So let's do that. We get 2 times 1 over 5 to the 0 ln 5 minus 3 to the 0 ln 3. And from here, 5 to the 0 is 1, 3 to the 0 is 1. So our final answer is 2 over natural log 5 minus natural log 3. And if we want to simplify this a little bit, we know natural log 5 minus natural log 3. We can bring those together to get natural log of 5 thirds. So that is our final solution. Remember that the way that we got to this answer was we started with our product, turned it into a finite product to let us deal with it a little easier, and then we looked at the pattern of what happened as we expanded each of the terms. We just moved them around a little bit so that we can realize that they were actually in terms of a geometric sum. We played around with those a little bit, took our limit, and got our answer just like this.